We are Omar and Andrea, and while our company is on standby due to current events, we have moved to Portugal, purchased a ruin, lived in a container for four months, which is due to be transported to the land soon. We call ourselves Indigo Travel, so we find it appropriate to call this channel the Indigo Escape. Good morning everyone! Good morning! Today we're going to be talking about the price of the property and some other expenses that are relevant. Some of you were pretty accurate in guessing the price that we paid, while others were a little bit off. But before we do that, we are going to have some breakfast. <laughs> We have been living in this container for about five months and we found it on a popular website in Portugal called olx.pt which is basically the equivalent of Craigslist in the US or Gumtree in the UK. Yeah we were originally looking for caravans but then we were worried about how the heat would affect them and deteriorate over time and the value would also depreciate so uh, we started looking for containers thinking that we might be able to do something with them to make it possible to live and then we just came across this it already came with doors with windows it already came with a sink and an air conditioner and then we installed a very small wood banner to help us through the winter so this container cost 2,300 euros with an additional cost of 400 euros for delivery from Coimbra. Unfortunately, every time we have to move it, it's gonna cost us 400 euros. But over the long term, that's not that bad because at least it's not going to deteriorate and we'll have a container that we'll be able to use afterwards for an office for us to work from. Shall we go? Yes, let's go. go. Cool. Before we go, we'd like to tell you about the car. This is a 1998 Audi A4. It's done about 230,000 uh, kilometers, which is about 120,000 miles. And the cost was 2,400 euros. Yeah, so basically you also need to get insurance here. And the insurance is coming up to 200 euros per year for a fully comprehensive policy. Uh, so far we really like this car and it may have been better if we had got a pickup truck seeing that we're doing a renovation and we're probably going to end up paying more for deliveries. Yeah. But at the end of the day it's got really great f fuel efficiency and we like doing our long car journeys and exploring so it really worked for us. Now the cost of the car compared to England uh, is quite a big difference. This car in England I checked this morning would have cost about 800 to a thousand pounds in England. You know England is just the cheapest place to buy a car yeah. in Europe. We're gonna go now. Yay! Before we go I just want to mention that I also got braces as you have already noticed. Um, another thing I really wanted to do here in Portugal is get my braces done because in England they were so expensive. This is costing me here about 128 euros per per month, and uh, which is going to come up to about what 3, it? Euros. about 3,000 euros. And in England it was going to cost me about 5,000 pounds. If you're going to mm. get your teeth done, wait until you get to Portugal. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
just washing and the drying it's two euros for 20 kilos for 20 minutes we need a washing machine <laughs> now waiting for the laundry <laughs> it's ready yes. Where is cheaper in England or here? Oh, it's literally the same price. How it's always sunnier here. So, <laughs> we are here in Portugal and we want to tell you how we came here. Yeah, we've lived in England for quite a long time, for about 10 years. We've worked in tourism and we were very comfortable until lockdown happened. So I'm sure that you guys are in the same boat. Lockdown really made us think about our lives and our priorities. And we really thought we really would like to be closer to nature. We want to be in a place with a really good sense of community, with great food and much better weather. And Portugal was a very good idea and a good place to go. Because as well, if we had stayed in England, we were just going to burn through our savings because we no longer had the income that we were used to. Yeah. And so we just had to take the jump. So September last year, we just packed up our stuff, organized all of our things so we could just jump on a plane with as much excess luggage we could. And we flew over here to Portugal. Yeah, so here we are. The next question was, where in Portugal should we go? <laughs> The Algarve is a fantastic region in the south of Portugal where over 7 million visitors come every year to enjoy the beautiful beaches and scenic towns. It's quite a touristic area and some of it doesn't quite feel authentically Portuguese. Lagos, however, has a unique feeling to it and we fell in love with it but unfortunately it's way out of our budget. Lisbon is easily one of our favourite cities in Europe, with a vibrant cosmopolitan atmosphere. We would not have been able to buy a property here, therefore we would have need to settle in a property located quite far away from the city. Our budget couldn't even afford a garage in the capital. The north is also very appealing and steeped in historic charm. But as we are totally in love with Lagos and Lisbon and want to visit them frequently after Covid subsides, then the north would be too far for us. However, you should still check it out if you are planning to relocate to Portugal. We weren't too interested in going further inland even though it has its advantages, such as being closer to Spain. Also, land and properties tend to be cheaper. The Coimbra area felt right. We have an excellent hospital nearby, we're just under an hour away from the beach and it's well connected to the best parts of Portugal. And in a personal note, my sister lives here. Meet Jai. She has been living here for the past 10 years with her family, so it made sense to not only be in a great location, but also be near her. So we were driving around one day in the area in Puyares and we saw a property that we really liked. Therefore we called the agency and asked them if we can view the property and he was very kind to organize another five viewings with him and we ended up choosing another property that he suggested for viewing. In fact we actually saw 15 properties and um, we weren't sure when we saw this property we were like this is too good to be true that uh, there must be other great deals out there so we went and we looked at two other agencies and they showed us around various properties 
And then when we found out that this actually was the best property, that's when we went, came back to the first estate agent and said, we'd like to put a deposit down. So here is the answer for the question that we've all been waiting for. How much did we pay for it? Well, it was listed for 34,000. Initially, we put an offer in at 25,000, which wasn't accepted. And it was a lot of toing and froing, and eventually yeah. we agreed on a price of 30,000 euros. So the way I see it is we pay about 10 euros per square meters of this property. We came up with a criteria list to follow to choose our property. The first thing is land. We didn't want anything too big, so around 4,000 meters squared was our maximum. The bigger the land is, the more expensive it is to maintain, and I'd like to show you why. So over here we have the brambles, and there are brambles everywhere on our land, and they grow incredibly fast. Every year you have to cut this back, and 4,000 meters squared is probably just enough for us to be able to manage. Another really important aspect for us was not to have many flammable trees like mimosa and eucalyptus. There was a really devastating fire in October 2017 which highlighted the importance to keep your land tidy to ensure the safety of your neighbours and yourself. So the eucalyptus tree is actually not native to Portugal. It comes from Australia and it was first introduced in the 19th century by Sir Joseph Banks. Eucalyptus tree is very profitable, about three times more than the cork tree. It's used for paper production, for leña and also for construction. We wanted a house or a ruin to renovate. Amongst all the places that we had a look at, this place was very raw. What we saw is what we were getting. Now, the other places we saw had lots of layers that once we started peeling them back, we were probably going to be in for a surprise. And surprises, unfortunately, can be expensive. The second time we came to look at this property, we brought along with us a qualified builder who had a close inspection of all the supporting walls and the main structure. And he told us that actually it was in a very good condition. As mentioned in our first video, we also wanted to be close to amenities such as supermarkets, schools, cafes, Centro de Saúde and gyms. And we are within about 10 to 20 minutes. Another important thing for us was to have a source of income on the property. And so having an outbuilding that we could convert into a rentable flat or also for us to be able to invite our friends for when they are visiting us was a really important factor. So this is a future project that will require planning permission. Another very important aspect when buying a property for us is to have very good access for trucks and deliveries because it will probably be very important when it comes to renovating our house. Many of the places that we looked at didn't even have place for our Audi, let alone a truck. Now that's very important because it would be literally impossible to do a renovation without any access. Yeah. In the future, what we want to do is make this into a sustainable project with an off-grid electricity service and to be able to live off the land, use, uh, growing vegetables and keeping animals. Now, we can't do that yet. We don't have the money to do that. So it was very important for us to be able to have access to water and electricity. And later on, we hope to be able to cut the electricity off and be able to run off our own electric grid. And lastly, we really wanted a courtyard, so it will be a very sociable area of the house and also provide us with a lot of privacy. The total cost of the property was 30,000 euros. 
Now, there were some extra costs involved, such as the taxes and also the legal fees. And I really recommend to find a lawyer uh, whenever you're purchasing anything. Never buy a property here without a lawyer. We had a great lawyer from Goyce and she helped us all along the way. Yeah. So the cost of her services was 695 euros. Yeah, we, she was very good and we highly recommend her. If you want her details, let us know and we'll post it in our comment section. And also you have to pay some taxes as well. And the taxes came up to 832 euros. So the total cost of the property was? 31,527 euros. So there you have it guys, that's how much we spend on this property. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. We're really eager to help anyone along the way and uh, encourage you to come to this great area of central Portugal. Yeah. You won't regret it. No, and thank you so much for watching our video. We'll see you guys next week. See you then. Bye. Bye. Até já.